All right, well, welcome everybody to another Bar Talk virtual chat edition of the Omaha Bar Association Bar Talk, which used to be a podcast. I'm Dave Summers, Executive Director of the Omaha Bar Association, and I have the pleasure of being on the interwebs today with the Dean of Creighton Law School, Joshua Fourche. Thank you for, for meeting us in this virtual context. Well, I'm glad we could connect. So uh, for all the attorneys, judges, um, staff of, of the law firms in town, can you give them an update on how things are going um, at the law school? Absolutely. Uh, things are going uh, as well or better than could be expected um, in light of everything that we're working on. We do have a lot of challenges. Um, but we've moved classes to uh, completely remote delivery uh, in a variety of, of settings. Some classes are meeting uh, live by Zoom and other uh, other forms. We have uh, we're recording all of those because we have students in situations where they can't count on being in a particular place and available at a particular time with schools and daycares closed and spouses and significant others working uh, different schedules and. and care uh, sick loved ones in some cases. Um, we're trying to meet people where they are and, and be as flexible as we can be while continuing to deliver the education that we promised them. And so far it's gone well. The, uh, the students have been incredibly resilient and focused and some of them are facing some really, really trying circumstances and, and um, they've done a good job of looking out for one another. They've done an exceptional job of following the rules we've set up and ask them to, to try and keep people safe. Uh, faculty and staff have been up to the task. So it, it has been a, a remarkable time, an unsettling time, but, um, but I've been really thrilled and impressed with the, with the whole Creighton uh, community. And I, I should have asked this first. Um, how are you and your family doing? How are the professors, staff, students uh, doing? Any health concerns right now that we have? <sighs> No major ones. Um, we've had uh, a couple of students who uh, have have faced some health challenges, um, but overall, uh, people are good, and we haven't had any major uh, challenges from from the pandemic uh, per se. Uh, it does create all sorts of problems for people, uh, for people with anxiety, for people who are uh, lonely and depressed. Obviously, this is making things even harder. So we've we've done a lot to try and reach out to those folks and and. We're going to continue to find more of what we can do. Um, personally, I, I, you know, this isn't fun for anybody, but I, I can't, couldn't be in a better spot. I actually have a ton of work to do, which means even though it's virtual, I'm connecting with a lot of people, which is, is in its own way, uh, way a blessing that I get to, to have that kind of interaction, even though we're, we're facing a lot of challenges. Uh, my family's good. I've got a high school age son and a middle school daughter, and they're both doing well, even if they get a little little tired of one another periodically um but but so far uh you know certainly for us i'm as fortunate as i can be and i'm, I'm thankful for that um so uh, people seem to be holding up well but but I, I also think people are doing a good job of masking the challenges that they're facing uh, I, I know that's true of some of our students faculty and staff and i'm sure it's, it's true of our whole community um but people have, have really tried to come together and take care of each other and uh, so I'm hopeful, but but it's not lost on me how how big a challenge it is and how good some people are at hiding those uh, those challenges. Yeah, I, I mean that's a very good point. I think maybe as a profession we we tend to mask um, the adversity that we're facing personally, individually, and so I think that that's an important thing that we certainly need to look at. And you've hit the nail on the head to to not um, just overlook that and keep on going, but but take a moment try to understand what's going on so they can address it now before it builds on itself down the way. Exactly, and, and that's one of the things that, one of my constant messages for our students and, and faculty and staff has been to give yourself a break. Uh, you're not gonna be perfect. This is hard on everybody, and, and even when things seem like they're good, it's still hard. Um, and you know, being able to let yourself off the hook is an important, important trait too. And, you know, and, and people need to find their own places. Sometimes we find, you know, trying to, to find things that are funny, that's okay. There are times when we have to be serious, but we need to try to keep some of that balance and give each other some space to figure out um, our own best path through all of this. 
Absolutely. Now, your house has two educators. You and your wife are both uh, law professors, um, as well as your position as dean. Uh, your, your kids are now at home uh, studying. Are, are you putting on, on a different educator hat and trying to help them in their studies? Or are they saying, stay away, dad, stay away, mom. We're going to handle this on our own week. Well, a little bit of both, but for the most part, um, we are fortunate to have uh, such great schools here in Omaha and, and our kids have been able to, uh, they have programs through their schools that they have things to do and um, they've been able to, to manage most of that. I haven't got a whole lot of uh, requests for help. So um, our job right now is, is a little more uh, hands-on than usual, but it's been the same job. Are you doing your homework? Are you getting the things done you need to, um, and and making sure that they're they're pulling their uh, their weight around the house? So it doesn't change too much for us. I will say for for my wife Kendra, has um, things have been very smooth. I think for her courses, but um, and I'm hearing this from faculty around the country um, that she's doing virtual meetings with Zoom and other with, with students and virtual office hours and is able to to connect, but. Um, one of the things that's happening, and it's probably true in other professions too, for lawyers, I, I suspect particularly, of we sit right here all day. Um, and and there have been more than a few times that I've talked to people where you just kind of forget that you didn't eat or forget that we don't have a routine in the same way. And, and because people are on different schedules, we can uh, be accessible. I mean, this is, uh, I think, my, my fifth or sixth Zoom meeting for today. So, um, that's been an interesting, but it, it's the way we've been able to stay connected is is pretty remarkable too, and and hopefully that will help inform us in some positive ways moving forward when when we don't have to deal with these kinds of challenges. One thing you mentioned that I think is incredibly important, and I'm not sure maybe you can speak to other law schools if this is if this is a standard practice right now. Well, maybe nothing standard right now, but when you are doing your um, your classes, you know, the understanding that some people uh, maybe can't m meet at the same time as, as they would have otherwise because the children are home, they're dealing with a you know loved one that's that's um, that's sick or something like that. So, so having those that ability to watch your classes later or potentially you know Zoom meet with a with a professor at a different time after watching the you know the the meeting playback, uh, the class meeting playback. Um, is that something that uh, that you thought of on your own, or is that something that's being done elsewhere? Because I've never heard of that. That sounds really, really smart and intuitive. Well, one of the things I didn't come up with that on my own, certainly, and it's one of the things that's been good about uh, this whole process is I'm part of a group of deans across the country, and, and we have different folks. Our, our legal writing folks have their listserv, and, and most specialty areas do. Um, but one of the things that, that I did was reach out to people who do teaching and learning and, and who focus on the educational process, uh, particularly those who had done online teaching, um, because, you know, we didn't, nobody would plan to take a whole curriculum online in a week, which <laughs> means we're not doing online teaching. I've designed an online course before, but not for anything that we're teaching right now. And it's very different. And so right now we're, we're we had to figure out how do we, adjust to something when you're in midstream. And, and the constant message that we were hearing from educators and others who have been through this process, I, you know, my wife and I went to law school at Tulane, so we had uh, folks who had been through Hurricane Katrina and, and talked to them about disaster response and how do you, you know, what do you do? And, and while it's a very different setting, um, there were some lessons there too uh, of people who've been through this. But the consistent message was in these kinds of circumstances where you lose child care, maybe you have spouses losing jobs, those kinds of things. The, the schedule's out the window. You know, we've got, we know, I know one student who's got three children with one on the way uh, in a two bedroom apartment and they're trying to move and they're getting ready and they plan for all of these things. But, um, you know, he knew what he was signing up for in terms of that that was gonna be a challenge with, with, with that at home, but he always thought he'd be able to go to the library. Right. He always thought that he'd be able to go and, and have some space and so, uh, the constant message, and, and I think almost every law school I've talked to around the country and, and heard about is doing some version of that, of trying to accommodate people where they are. Um, because you're right, we just, 
we have people in so many different circumstances that um, we have to do that. And, and it was uh, it was impressive how well people started saying, forget about these other challenges. They're, this is part of the environment now. And it's true for faculty too, by the way, right? You've got people trying to teach and, and um, you know, more than a few people have had a child walk by uh, during, during <laughs> uh, and, and those kind of things. And we show each other a little grace and, and um, understand that's where we are and how things work right now. Uh, and it's how they need to. And it's, and it's, it's hard, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, and, and to that, um, to that idea, I mean, you have, you have some faculty members, uh, some young faculty members, some, some older faculty members, and they're all in this at the same time. Uh, how's the response been from, uh, from different generations? It varied. Um, most everybody was able to get things figured out. I'll tell you, Creighton University did a remarkable job with our teaching and learning center and other folks. Uh, of getting people trained on how to do different delivery and, and people are doing it in different ways. Uh, some are doing podcast recordings, some are doing video recording, some are holding their class by Zoom but recording it for later. Uh, so they're all kind of finding their own path of what they're more comfortable with. Um, but we've really had very limited uh, significant challenges on that and it's been pretty remarkable to see and and, um, and I'm thankful uh, for that. But, you know, yeah, the ge different generations. We have some people who are who already recorded a lot of their classes, and so they had things available. Um, the other nice part is that those folks who are more comfortable with some of the technology have also been able to say, hey, you know, the Teaching and Learning Center has you know a campus full of people trying to teach 8,500 students online. Um, we can help you too. I've done this before, uh, and so uh, and that's most tends to be the younger faculty, um, though not exclusively. And so it's, it's been good and, um, and how they respond to it has been a little bit different, um, but everybody has responded in a, in a way that's been productive. Taking a step back to before the present day and to, uh, to, to your time as Creighton Law School Dean, um, you know, from last year when you, when you started, I believe, right? Was that May of last year? Yep, I year? started in July of, of last year. Can you, can you take me through, you know, what, what's been, how's your experience been up to the crazy new, new world right now? How, how's your experience been? What have you been uh, excited to see and what are you looking forward to maybe outside of exactly what's going on right now? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we, we like every law school and every educational institution, we, we've had our challenges, but I, I will say, you know, going through the interview process and, and deciding to come here, a lot of things had to work out and a lot of things had to fall in place. And, um, you know, I had to feel like I fit and a lot of people here had to, had to agree with that. And, and for both me and for my wife, um, we had a good feeling about it. We were, we felt connected to the school in a way that honestly didn't really expect to going into it because we didn't know much about uh, Creighton or Omaha, but, but it, through the process really felt connected and welcomed and, and valued. And, that has continued uh, for every part of, of being here. Our students have been remarkable. Our faculty has been so willing and, and committed to working forward and, and finding new paths um, that it's, it's been a great experience. It's, it's been uh, humbling at times and it's reminded me thing, you know, any new job you take in any new position, you learn things and, and tend to learn fairly quickly what you don't know. Uh, <laughs> and that has certainly happened. Um, but I've been really, really proud to be part of this community and, and I'm thankful. And, and it's, you know, our students are, are so remarkable. And, and, you know, seeing that before this, all of this went down uh, was something that I was seeing. And then, and then to be in the situation we are now, um, it continued to, to impress and, and um, even beyond anything that I could hope and expect. So it's been a great experience. And, and the legal community has been incredibly welcoming. I've, I've tried to get out and meet as many of our, our alums and other people in the community, even if they're not our alums in the, in the legal community. And, and people have been very uh, gracious and welcoming and, and committed to working together. And um, so I couldn't be happier uh, to be honest with you with, with where we are and, uh, and the choice we made to be part of this community. Well, that's great. We're, we're glad to have you. and. I have to say, um, as an outsider, when I arrived in 2009 to now, it, you know, the community really does embrace those that are here and want to be a part of it. And so 
um, it's a special place. It really is. And, and we're, we're so happy to have you. I mean, obviously, uh, the Mall Bar Association has our offices in your uh, building and we have since uh, the building opened in the 70s. And so we very much appreciate that. Um, and I think we actually, looking back at the history, that's the official history in Creighton, um, the OBA, uh, you know, worked together with Creighton University when it started law school back in the in 1906 or, or whenever that was. So uh, I, I appreciate our close history and also obviously um, the community coming to, you know, to work with you and work with um, your students and, and young alums. And so uh, it's all good feels on this side too. Oh, good. Um, so let's if if i can have you put on your um your karnak hat or, or not maybe karnak hat but your crystal look in your crystal ball and see if you think that what's going on right now is going to have any downstream effects down the way for for legal education um anything that you see that could be sticking after this or change because of this well i i, I think we have to anticipate some level of, of impact um <clears throat> At a minimum, our ability to have face-to-face -face meetings without um, actually being face-to-face -face has become pretty clear to all of us, I think, uh, right now. And so I certainly think there's going to be some impacts there. Um, you know, depending on what happens with, with the financial markets and other markets, there's going to be some significant changes, I think, that way. Uh, that I don't know this could be the, the cause of some of those changes um, as any other significant event does right at various times when we've had uh, crises or, or uh, significant changes. Um, we have a, a, a shift in, you know, the kind of legal work, for example, that's being done. Um, it's going to be very curious to see, uh, see what's next. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of financial troubles. There may be a lot of restructuring work uh, to do. There's obviously a lot of landlord tenant and, and those kind of things are continuing to see. Oh, we saw that uh, in the uh, in our clinic, for example, before, and, and that's continued and, and not likely to slow down. Uh, so I think we'll see some some significant changes, and some of them are hard to predict. Um, I do think that we will that maybe we will see some changes in how we work and how we deliver our work. Um, productivity has been uh, at times a challenge, although I think I'm also hearing and seeing from people who are. Um, figuring out how to be incredibly productive, so much so that um, they have to remind themselves to stop working. Because once you bring your workplace home, and, and this is absolutely true, and when I started practice, I, I tried very hard to live near my office so I could get to my office, um, so that at least when I left, I could leave most of it there. And, and now none of us are in that spot, right? The, the office is right there all the time, and so, um, I hope that we'll we'll try to take that lesson too of um, figuring out even how to segment segment that even in our own homes. Absolutely, um, you know we had uh, Judge Wheelock on this podcast, this or virtual cast, I should say, and he was talking about how he's he's working constantly and he doesn't shut it down, and now he's back in the office so he can leave the office and and have that physical um, disconnect when he when he actually leaves, but. But you're right. Um, when you're at home and and you're working, there's no, you know, there's no okay. And now I have to go leave and and go somewhere else. You're you're in your workspace. So uh, I I know that it's been said over time that you're not supposed to necessarily have your workspace in your living space in your in your bedroom space, especially if you can avoid it. Right? That there's some sort of disconnect that you're not thinking or seeing your work when you're trying to not work. So maybe some of the soft skills and, and um, education um, needs to come to the forefront uh, as we're looking at this right now as a profession and, and also um, for the students that are now hardwiring the, the tendencies um, as, as they get in, into it. I have to ask, um, three L's, um, bar exam, graduation, I just heard that all the UNO, UNL, they're not doing you know, graduations, there's no walking ceremony anymore. I assume Creighton's already made a decision on that or will be making a decision on that. Bar exam's coming up. Um, any insight as to how these three L's are gonna manage what's coming down the way? 
Well, there's no question that's one of the big priorities and it's something that I've been working on quite a bit uh, and will be continuing to, including uh, the thing I do after this, we'll be talking about bar exam uh, opportunities. I I've been very committed and vocal about trying to preserve some version of getting our students to work, uh, graduates to work as soon as possible. I think it's important both for them, uh, but also for the profession and for uh, their potential clients. There's work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, New York had to cancel their bar exam for July and, and they don't, haven't announced what they're going to do. They are in a different spot, both in terms of uh, the need for the Javits Center for a, a healthcare facility and, and the fact that you know 14,000 students or, or uh, graduates take the bar exam in, in New York every year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was one of them almost 20 years ago. Um, and so we're in a different spot and one of the things I'm really committed to is trying to find a path to getting our students uh, and our graduates into, into their jobs. Um, and that means looking at alternative uh, methods. Obviously, we, being safe is still priority one, um, but there are, we need to be creative in a time of uncertainty. And, and this is not a time to use conventional solutions for an unconventional problem. And so I think that there's an opportunity to, whether it's, uh, you know, if, if we're allowed to have nine people in a room to take an exam and we can safely do that, uh, maybe we look at doing that and that would mean, you know, lots and lots of proctors that we might need to do and, and figuring out how to manage that. Are there ways to, to do the exam remotely with, with uh, remote proctoring that, that has been done in some places? A slight delay is not a huge, uh, huge problem, but, but to me, I'm concerned about solutions that just kick the can down the road because we already know how hard this is. Currently, we have a system where you graduate and then you take the bar exam in July where you're close to your studies, you've been preparing. If students go to work for five months, six months, a year, they'll have client burdens uh, and, and other obligations as they're trying to study for the bar exam. And, it, and I, I just don't like what that does. So saying, let's just do it in February creates all sorts of problems. So um, I'm going to be working on that. Some schools, some places are talking about a limited dip diploma privilege or some other variation on that. As far as I'm concerned, everything needs to be on the table and that I want to talk to our uh, employers and talk to our courts and talk to, you know, and I've been talking with Dean Moberly and Dean Anderson at Drake uh, uh, and others about what can we do and how do we look at this, but we need to find a solution that, um, as far as I'm concerned, gets our graduates to work as soon as possible in a way that protects their future clients too, but, but there are things we can do. So that's going to be a commitment. Uh, I don't have as much power of the, over the outcome as I would like, um, but I will be working as hard as I can to make sure we get to some level of that outcome. Uh, for graduation, we have, uh, we did, official graduation was canceled for Creighton. Uh, there will be a degree conferral, so they will be able to get their degrees and, and have that credential. Um, I'm committed to trying to find uh, a hooding uh, ceremony, for example, which is a big part of, of becoming a lawyer. If they'll let us do groups of nine, I'll do it in groups of nine. If we can do some version of a, uh, drive through or virtual hooding. I don't know what we can do, but we're going to be as creative as we can to try and deliver at least some kind of experience. And then when we're allowed to, um, we will do something more formal too. Absolutely. I think, uh, I mean, what, and this is an ongoing thread that I, I hear throughout everything that you're saying, Dean, which is we need to have compassion, empathy, understanding, and, and think outside the box and, you know, employers, law firms, uh, the courts, things like that, they, they need to be part of the solution for making sure that these these new lawyers, these new grads, as they're going to go take the, the bar exam and hopefully do well in the bar exam and, and continue their law practice, but we can't necessarily overtax, the, tack, overtax them as law clerks, um, not, not believing uh, that it's going to be a problem for them to you know, study for the February bar, if that's what it is, or if it's, if it's just a few months later, um, understanding that the longer we push this off, the maybe more difficult it is for those students, if they're that far out of school, if, they, if you know, their, their studying um, changes dramatically from, from what we've had in the past. I mean, that just puts more stress on them and, and possibly um, have a more difficult chance of, of doing well in the bar exam, and that's certainly not what we want. We want them to succeed. So I think everybody's got to got to look at this and, and come to the table and be willing to work with you. So thank you for that. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. So um, I, 
I, I've run out of questions and I've taken a lot of your time. Is there anything else that you wanted to, to, to mention or, or say to the Omaha legal community? Um, yeah, I, I would like to say, well, uh, to you and the Omaha Bar Association and to the whole legal community, thank you. Thank you for, for your support and your commitment to our students and our profession. Um, I'd say to people, stick with it. We're going to get through this. Um, it's okay to acknowledge that it's hard, um, you know, and, and looking out for each other and being for being there for each other is, is not always as easy when you have to be at least six feet apart. But, um, but in some version, we can still look out for one another, even if we can't be uh, in the same proximity as we'd like. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dean, and good luck on that call uh, or that Zoom conference with uh, Dean Moberly and the Dean at Drake uh, for a solution for Bar Exam. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye. Thanks very much. Good to see you, Dave.